Hello, fellow students. Today we're going to be calculating the pH of 0.1 mole per liter acetic acid, which is a weak acid, and so to calculate its pH, you have to be given a constant called Ka, the acid dissociation constant. For this acid, it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, what a weak acid means is that the acid itself, when it mixes with water, does not give you 100% yield of H3O plus or H+, plus, depending on how your teacher taught you. I always teach it as H3O+, plus, which is water with an extra H on it. So there's where the H is, plus the acid that's left over, A-. minus. Now, this goes forward and can go backwards, so I do this equilibrium arrow as well. This is the aqueous acid, this is liquid water, this is H3O plus dissolved in water, and the acetate ion that's left over is also dissolved in water, so they all get AQs. But that's neither here nor there. If you're asked to calculate the pH of this, you either have a shortcut formula, or you have to do an ice table. Let's do the ice table, then I'll show you the shortcut. Initial, change, and equilibrium concentrations. Water doesn't matter because it's a liquid. We start with 0.1 moles per liter of the acid and we lose an unknown amount of it. So our equilibrium concentration is 0.1 minus x. Now we're gonna start with almost no H3O plus and no acetate, but we're going to gain an amount of those equal to however much of this was lost because it's this that's breaking apart to give us those. So the equilibrium concentrations of these are both x. Zero plus x simplifies to that. Now, the Ka is similar to Keq, if you've been taught that. The Ka is products over reactants to the power of their coefficients, but these are all ones, so we have H3O plus concentration times the acetate ion concentration divided by the HA concentration, and water gets ignored again because it's a pure liquid. Well, not pure, but it's a liquid here. What this means is I can plug in my numbers. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 equals, that's Ka on the left. My H3O plus is x, and my A minus is also x, so that gives me x squared on top. And on bottom, my equilibrium HA concentration is 0.1 minus x. Now, if you know how to solve this rational quadratic expression, go ahead and use the quadratic formula. The rest of us are going to take a shortcut. The shortcut is that if this concentration, the initial concentration, divided by the K you were given, is greater than, now some teachers use 100, some teachers use 500, some teachers use 1,000, just make sure you're above the threshold they set, then you're allowed to just chop off this minus x, because x will be so small that compared to 0.1, it will have almost no effect. Now if I do that here, I get 0.1 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Where's that button on this calculator? Times 10 to the negative 5. Bam! I get 5,555. That beats all the thresholds I've ever seen teachers use. So that means that this is approximately true. Whatever x is, is going to be so small that compared to 0.1, it doesn't matter. What that means is we can solve this an easier way. We have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 on the left multiplied by 0.1, because that's how you undo division on the right side, you multiply it on the left, equals x squared. And then to get x, the equilibrium concentration, you square root both sides. Now your teacher may have taught you a shortcut, which you might see here. She might, or he or she might have taught you, that the H plus concentration in the end is the square root of Ka times C, the initial concentration. It assumes that your concentration is high enough relative to the Ka that you can make this assumption. You can see why these two kind of relate to each other. Let's just do that now. I got 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0.1 gives me 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6. And then when I square root that answer, calculator gives me 
H plus, or rather X, is 1.34 times 10 to the negative three. Is that much lower than 0.1? Well, yes it is. If you want me to prove it to you, I can take the time. 0.1 minus 0 0.00134 is 0 0.09866, which is so close to 0.1 that we can pretend it was. Anyways, the point behind this is the pH, and the way you calculate pH once you have the x in this kind of calculation is that the pH is negative log of your H plus concentration, or in my case, the H3O plus concentration. That's the negative log of 1.34 times 10 to the negative three, or my x. Now I'm gonna to have to get that number again. That's the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the negative six. There it is with all the possible digits. And when I take the negative log of that answer, the calculator gives me 2.87. Nice. Now I realize there's only one sig fig here, so your teacher might ask you to round this to three or 2.9. I'm a personally a big fan of leaving pH with two decimal places all the time. It's the way I like it. The end. The point behind calculating the pH of acetic acid or any weak acid is that you're given the Ka, you can either do this ice table in full or jump straight to here because it's always the same setup. Ka equals x squared over C minus x. You'll usually be able to use an assumption that lets you chop off this x. If you can't, you're stuck using the quadratic formula. Solve for x and the negative log of that x gives you the pH. It's a beautiful thing, just like you are, my friends. Best of luck.